How the heck are you, everybody? I'm Thessidius. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another guide. Another day, another guide, another beautiful graphic, as you can see behind me, from the lovely Dolores. So guys, Olog is an amazing, amazing character in this game. He might be one of the absolute best tanks we've got, including legendaries. I just finished a Heroes tier list for only epic champions with Ronaldo Plays. Go check him out if you don't know him. And we ranked Olog as one of the only two god tier epics in the entire game. Just him and one other. You're gonna have to watch the video to find out. But he's that good. So we're gonna get back to this graphic in just just a bit, let's head in to where else but the Void Rift. So why do I say Void Rift? Well, why am I making this guide? Olog is a tremendous champion who all of a sudden we get for free. I'm not joking, he's a god tier, legit god tier tank, god tier epic champion, and you can get him from the Void Rift and the normal Void Rift at that. As you can see, I've already cleared it. Uh, I'll be doing hard Void Rift next week, but right now we did the normal Void Rift and I had to go all the way back, I had to uh, ride my horse all the way back to the start of phase one, but you're gonna have a battle right here, guys, and then you do your second battle right here and look who's waiting for us, Olog. And when do you, doesn't he say something to us? He said something to me when I walked by. Basically, he's warning you that the Void Rift is scary. It's a lot less scary if you get him on, on uh, your team. He's a tremendous champion. He's a very straightforward champion, which is something I wholeheartedly appreciate. You know, I love a nice complex kit, but I also like a nice, clear and concise kit. So without further ado, I have Olog. Uh, my Olog, however, is Awaken level two. I put a Soul Stone in him, and then I got the extra copy um, from the Void Rift. So I'm gonna go to the gallery here so we can show him off. Where are you, buddy? He's a member of the North Throne, which we'll talk about later at the end of the video when we talk about synergies, but his kit and the way it works could not work better than it does with the, the Lords from this faction, with King Hearts, if you're lucky enough to get him, or if you're a little less lucky, but still lucky, or you were here early enough for the Assault Diffusion, which unfortunately I was not, uh, Assault also pairs beautifully with him with those Lord skills. However, we've got Olog. That's for later on in the video. Olog right here, let's just talk about aesthetic for a second. He's what I like to describe, I believe the technical term is he's a thick boy. That's a thick with two Cs. He's girthy, they made special custom armor just for him. I really like the look. Again, it's a nice, simple look, not too flashy. There's some bedazzlements, uh, some accoutrement, but uh, in general, he just looks really cool. He's really simple, he's just like a nice knight. He's got this cool little thimble helmet. What more do you need to know? Well, he's got a very cool, nice and simple kit as well. First off, let's start with base stats, as I always like to do. Guys, whenever you're in the gallery, make sure to hit max level. So at full promo, level 60, no awakenings, he's got 21,355 hit points. Uh, attack doesn't matter for him, we're just gonna focus on defense here, and his defense is 3,229. Uh, 3, uh, he's also got some healthy magic resist there at 734, but the two numbers I wanna focus on are that nice HP, just over 21K, and that nice defense, just over 3,200. So, what are the averages for an epic defender? I've got it right here, guys, uh, one moment. The average HP is just a hair over, a couple points over 23,000, and for defense, it's just over 2,900. So as you can see, he's about 1,700, 1,600, 1,700 points, hit points off from the average. However, he's a very, very comfortable 300 defense points higher. Uh, so very strong defense and just below average HP. He is a champion you're going to want to build with tremendously high HP. If we talk about Awakenings here, guys, uh, I think, does he get, yes, at Awakening 3, this is extremely clutch. So I'm one away. I'm going to wait for a little while before I use a Soul Stone. Maybe we'll pull an extra copy. Maybe they'll give us another copy in the Void Rift. Who knows if that's going to be repeatable. Uh, but getting an Awakening 3 is really cool, as you see, as we move on now to describe his kit. I want to quickly talk about comparisons in terms of base stats. I think Livian is the closest epic comparison I could find. Uh, let me pull it up right here. So you can see Livian at max level. Uh, her HP is just over 22,000, as opposed to Olog, just over 21. However, her defense is just a bit lower. So just over 3,100, as opposed to Olog, who was just over 32. Livian has really nice base stats, so does Olog. Uh, finally, I just figured we could look at a legendary champion so you could see where he stacks up against those. So Regulus has very nice base stats. Uh, maybe some of the best, absolute best base stats of any defender in the game. 27k HP and 4200 defense. So Olog's kit probably makes him a more viable tank than someone like Regulus. However, however, you always have to remember, guys, with these epic champions, they are always going to have lower base stats, basically, except for rare circumstances. They will have lower base stats than their uh, legendary counterparts, the same way that rares will have lower base stats than their epic counterparts. That's a big thing in this game. The higher the rarity, there's a big increase in stats. All right, let's go back to our boy, and this time we can head right into my build on Olog. You see, here's my A2 Olog. I actually just broke 40K BP. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we're gonna go into the sills. There's one disclaimer I wanna make, and this is pretty true with most tanks. 
particularly with Olog. With Olog, guys, if you've seen my videos before, I'm very kind of obsessed with attack speed. Attack speed de uh, determines, if you don't know, the frequency at which uh, your character performs their basic attack. The more basic attacks, the quicker you're gonna rege uh, uh, regenerate your range, and the quicker you'll be able to use your ultimates. However, in most content, Olog is not going to need to use his ultimate. We're gonna rely heavily on his auto passive, as you'll see in a second. I just wanna highlight, he's got this 2.4 second attack speed. You don't have to put one ounce of attack speed into him. He's gonna do basically no damage with this very low attack. It really doesn't matter. You don't need to worry about rage regen either, like I said, right? Because you're just gonna focus on his on his auto passive. So the, the goal with Olog will get this get into this in gear rating, but it's important already to be thinking about it doesn't matter if he's attacking, it doesn't matter if he's using his ultimate. We just want to make this big bad boy as tanky as possible. So guys, let's talk about his skills. Olog, he's got three skills. He's got a basic, he's got a pa an auto passive, and he has his, his ultimate. So his basic is just a physical attack. <laughs> Attacks deal damage to one enemy. They don't even say how much percent damage. That's how much he doesn't need to be used for attack. <laughs> Moving on, if we go here to Silver Shield, uh, this is what his kit is all about, guys. There is a typo in here, guys. When it's fully skilled up, it should be every 10 seconds because it starts at 12. 12 minus two is not 11, it is 10. However, rest assured, it is 10 seconds. I've timed it. So every 10 seconds, he creates a shield that can absorb damage up to 85% of max HP. Notice that's when you full, fully skill him up. When you skill him up, all that matters, or I mean, his ultimate's nice, but it really matters that you land all four skill ups here. That two second cooldown uh, removed from the cooldown is essential for the kind of content I'm gonna show you you're gonna use them in. And more importantly, look how much that shield improves. It goes from 50% of his HP to 85%. That's super duper significant, especially considering, as I showed you, his HP isn't so, so high for a tank, especially compared to legendaries, let alone Livian. Uh, then, so that's Silver Shield, guys. That's something you're gonna to wanna to remember. It's so important for him. And then moving on, we have Unbreakable. So this is a manual ultimate. When you skill it up, it's got a skill cost of 900. It lasts 30 seconds. Basically, he stops attacking. You don't care because his attacks don't do anything. He's going to shift into a defensive stance, kind of like this, putting the shield in front of him, and he increases his physical damage reduction by 50%. So he's really, 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 really hard to put any damage out on, and he's going to get one additional block. So his base block is going to be three. This makes it up to four. However, why wouldn't we use that? If you do it correctly, if you put skill ups into this and you build him with a ton, a ton, a ton of HP, this shield kind of stays up forever and he almost never takes damage. So you don't even need physical damage mitigation because he's never taking proper damage. Everything's going into the shield. All right, pretty cool. Let's talk about artifacts. Rightfully so, the best artifact I like on him is gonna be Olog's Wall. So what does Olog's Wall do? It was free from the Captain Reeve event from Trevor's in the Deep. Treasures in the Deep, I hope you guys picked a copy up. Increases block by one, so now he goes from base block of three to base block of, base block of four. Then if he has his ultimate, he's blocking five, which is kind of nutty. Increases physical damage reduction and magic reduction by 4%. This can go all the way up to, I want to say it's 15%. I'm not sure, I haven't promoted it the whole way, but very potent for every blocked unit, stacking up to four times. So even at its base level, if he's taking on four units, which he can do with this artifact that's kind of the beauty of it he can get 16 percent increased physical damage reduction and magic damage reduction it's very potent very very good uh, i want to call that this is what i think is best in slot there's two other good artifacts i can tell you about let's show you really really quickly so we've got this bad boy right is it no so we've got this bad boy right here regal majesty a very easy read received healing is up 20 percent not that much more to worry about, guys. Just when he's healed, it'll be 20% more. So in those rare moments his shield is going to come off, he'll be topped right back up. Pretty perfect. Or when his shield is up, you can take those moments to get some heals in him if you have a healer nearby. Then there's actually a legendary artifact I wanted to shout out to you guys. And quick tip, because I just learned this, shout out to uh, Baraiku, who let me know on Discord. If you go to the Forge and go to Forge Preview, I don't have this artifact, but you can pull it up and then you can find all the artifacts you need. So you go down here and you can find this artifact here, the North's Will. So this synergizes incredibly well with with uh, Olog, and especially his place within his faction. The lords in his faction are gonna give shields, he gives shields. Whenever those shields just happen to pop up, uh, pop off and they disappear, he's able to restore 10% HP. So as you see, I build my Olog, as you're gonna see in a second, with like 80% HP. So whenever a shield pops off, that's gonna give you an extra 8,000 HP. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's quickly talk about Awakenings and then we'll head into gearing. Guys, his Awakenings are quite good. At A1, increases strength of shield by 10%. Uh, so now your shields, instead of being 85% are 95%. That's very potent. 
Then here we go. And guys, keep in mind, this is all shields. I was just talking there about his auto passive, but this applies to shields provided from heals from like Vortex or provided from the Lords in his faction as well who do shielding. Then the A2, you get a little bit of extra defense. So my Olog actually has like 3,300 plus defense. That's pretty potent as a base stat. Here we got an extra 1,200 HP. I already talked about that. Fantastic. He's got great awakenings. He's got to be, of all the tanks, he probably has the best awakenings. All damage reduction plus 5%. So that's physical and magic. Very strong. And here, guys, on the A5, when you have Unbreakable, his ultimate up, he's going to grant. So not only he's gaining it, but he's granting physical damage reduction uh, to all the allies that are adjacent to him. That's pretty crazy. So now he's not just the tanky one, everyone near him, everyone that's near him is as well. Okay, let's talk about gearing, folks. So let's go back to that beautiful cinematic. You can see here, guys, it's nice and simple, just the way Olog is nice and simple. We don't need that many options for gear sets. We don't need that many options uh, for stats to prioritize. You wanna stack this bad boy with as much HP as absolutely possible, because you want those shields to be as big as possible. So on the accessories, you want HP percentage, HP percentage, HP percentage, HP bonus times three. That's what you need, right? When you're hunting in the sub stats uh, on the left-hand side with your accessories, of course, you can't change the main stats there. You're going for HP percentage. You're going for HP bonus. The other things you can look out for, of course, to help with damage mitigation, you can go for defense bonus, defense percentage, and then flat HP, flat defense. Like I said, the other regenerative things and attack speeds do not matter for him. He's a super easy gear, honestly. The artifacts we already covered, unfortunately, the legendary one's not listed there because I don't have it, so I didn't think of it until Ronaldo actually told me about it a few minutes ago. Uh, however, if we look at optimal gear sets, incredibly straightforward, and these both are absolutely best in slot. Uh, so Life Force is going to give when you get two pieces on your breastplate and your weapon, you get plus 25% HP. What did I say? As much HP as possible. And then on the Guardian set, we're going to get minus 15% damage taken. Uh, so if you can build a good Guardian set, that's what we should do. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot yet do that, but let's go in and check out what my Olog's build looks like. So guys, checking out my Olog, you can see a healthy amount of BP. What did I do? Well, everything I just told you, not even an ounce of attack speed, it doesn't matter. Any rage regen was an accident. All I'm doing here is I'm doing an HP bonus, and usually I'm sorting as a secondary set, defense bonus, or flat HP. So here you go, 60% with the touch. And it's a broken set, because I told you I can't build a good Guardian set yet, but that's obviously my goal. Here, I couldn't get a good 60% Mythic piece uh, and get defense bonus, so what I went with was some flat HP. And here, we were able to get both and even a little flat defense. My gear's not the best thing in the world, it is what it is. I guess I could quickly say, guys, if for some reason you could make a nice tanky Glacier set that you wanted to put on him, you could do that, but attack does basically nothing for him. So I really think you should go Guardian, or just go Broken set and hunt for stats the way I'm doing. Then we were able to get our Life Force. You should level up your Breastplate to 16 because the main stat, of course, is flat HP. That's what, that's what this whole thing's all about. You see, we got some pretty nice rolls here. The first two and the last, the first and the last don't matter, but this HP bonus is pretty solid, almost purple, and then a really nice defense bonus roll. Uh, and then this is a decent piece. Again, not perfect. Crit doesn't matter, but we got our flat HP, we got our defense bonus, and we got an HP bonus. So if this crit rate was flat defense, we'd have like per perfect substats there. If you get a piece like this, guys, and the, the stats go like HP, HP bonus, defense bonus, and then something else here you don't need, it's a weapon. His attack doesn't matter. Just level up to plus 12 and save the gold for somebody else. So there you go, guys. That's my Olog. Let's go see him in action and do a little content spotlight. So I want to feature him in two places very quickly, and then we can wrap this bad boy up. Uh, the number one place you might have guessed it is going to be Artifact Mature Raid. Then I'll take him into Campaign 9-7, Normal 9-7, which I know a lot of people have been struggling with, and I'll show you how he really saved the day for me there. But here we go, guys. I'm going to run two different things here. We're going to be an auto battle on Stage 18, but first, I want to do Stage 17. I see I've turned off Power of Dominance. Unfortunately, guys, as decent as my Olog is, he's not geared up enough without the Guardian set to do uh, what I'm about to show you in Artifact Material 17. He can't yet do that in 18. So I'll just show you the stats really quick. Just over 83,000 HP, and he's at almost 5,500 defense. So pretty solid there. Let's take him into some work now. So like I said, we're gonna start with Artifact Material Raid 17, and this isn't gonna be a proper battle. I just set up a little test for you guys, just to show you. You don't have to focus on any other units. They're just there to stall. Just watch how little damage Olog takes, and keep in mind there's no healer here or anything, and we're not using that healing artifact. We're not using Using the North's will. So let's give a little Olog spotlight. Make sure this thing's on 2x. So let's drop the bad boy right here. And notice I am not going to trigger, I promise I'm not going to trigger the ultimate at any point. You can see he starts with a little shield that's from Dogna. So I'm using a rare lord because I don't have a Solda. And now he starts putting his shields on himself. 
And as hard as Salazar tries, because 17 doesn't hit like 18, but it still hits, he's gonna maybe do no more than a scratch. He finally knocks the shield off, it times out perfectly, the new shield comes right back on. So these guys are just stall units, guys, you can ignore them, but just keep an eye on Olog. Nothing, nothing happening. Oh, he took maybe 2% of damage, doesn't matter, the shield's back up, and it's a bit of a rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. I can let this thing run, Ein will certainly die, uh, but they're just there to stall and just show you. He just, he's never gonna take a scratch. Maybe sometimes Salazar can get that shield off, but never long enough for to put any real damage before Olag puts it right back on. You see, there's a hit. Okay, let's put that shield back on. So now maybe he's down to like 20% off, so he's got 80% HP. Um, so with a good build, with a really strong Olag build, you can do this exact same thing uh, in 18, which is what a lot of people do. And then you can focus straight up only on DPS, and you don't have to waste your platform unit on a healer. So look how long we're going to make it, guys. Finally, they're reaching the boss. Now he's going to get powered up, but you can really see how it works. Unfortunately, guys, I can't do an auto battle uh, without turning. I can't turn off power dominance and do an auto battle. I learned that the hard way. Um, so I am going to have to do an auto and you'll see him with power dominance, but you still will get the sense because I did set up my auto battle now to not use a healer and you'll see what he's really capable of. It's really cool. Uh, that's kind of the beauty of, of, of Olog, you know, it's like a really elegant kind of thing. He's just so simple. It's, it's so nice. So you can see here, power of dominance, of course, is on. I'm not gonna pretend it isn't, but he starts taking damage in the beginning and then immediately gets the shield up and he's never really gonna take that more, much more damage or he certainly won't by the time my DPS take care of the Salazar boss here. After this, I figure we'll just quickly show him just the beginning of the fight. We don't have to do the whole thing of how I used him in a campaign normal 9-7. I know a lot of people got stuck there and Olag really was a star of the show there, engaging the main boss there into melee combat and kind of just distracting her and tanking it forever. And I don't even know if he took an inch of damage, uh, not one lick of damage. So there you go, nice easy run. I don't have the perfect run, but uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Olog's a real hero and he really is, the part of the reason me and Ronaldo were saying he's God tier is he can do that. No one else can do that, even legendary champions right now. No one can do that with just, the spamming of the shields and just making it really easy for a lot of people. So guys, we can head into uh, the normal campaign here. Here's 9-7. I guess I found a use for campaign auto battles. All right, let's get in here. So a bit slow start to the fight, but basically what you need to know, you're from, if you're familiar, you'll know the patterns of how these enemies move. But essentially from these portals out here, the big boss lady, she's gonna come. She's gonna wanna make this weird kind of meandering serpentine path. We're never gonna let her get farther than this block right here where we're gonna place our Olog. Uh, basically he's gonna distract her once he engages her in melee combat and from there she's a little bit sol uh, so that's all i really want to show you uh so we just got to wait patiently fortunately for us and fortunately for the length of the video's sake uh, i did get that three day uh free card from the from the event from the wild sands event so this should go i guess 0.5 x faster but here she comes she's very slow she takes all her time she also guys will will target your last deployed unit so I did use a healer here, but you see my last deployed unit that I strategically did by saving up costs with Narvi and everything was Olog. So he's just gonna tank everything. He's ne I don't know if he ever actually takes damage. There you see there, maybe he took about 5% damage, gets healed right back up by mid on, the shield comes on, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. She slowly is gonna come down. She keeps, if it wasn't Olog who was the last uh, deployed unit, she'd be targeting that person. But then once she engages him, she's gonna be distracted. Uh, that's how her kit works. And she's gonna engage in melee combat. So she's finally gonna get down there. Now she's finally gonna get the turn and now she's gonna meet her maker. She will never get far farther than the tile she's on right now. So basically, if you just want a very quick tip, the way I beat this fight is I focused on everything else. Olog stalled her out right there. She never moved. Then I picked up all the DPS I had on the other side, on this left side of the screen, picked them up, put them down near here. She was her. She was still distracted by Olog and they just slowly took her down. So there's 29 enemies here. We killed 28 of them. Then we just picked everyone up, moved them to her and then yeah. Olag was, was so thick, she was distracted, and then we just took her down. There you go, guys. That's how Olag works. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. The last thing I want to touch on is just the legendary lord skills of Isolde and, and uh, King Hearts and how well they work with Olag. So let's get out of here. Let's head to the camp. Unfortunately, I don't have either of those heroes, but we can easily go to the gallery. And guys, I do want to say Olog is an amazing faction. The North Throne, these Northerners, it might be the best PvE faction in the game. Uh, getting a full North Throne team is kind of essential. And having Olog, he's like kind of the heart of that whole team. Let's just show a Solda since most, most of us aren't going to have legendary lords. If we go to her lord skill, you see the basic 10% here but then periodically grants all faction allies a shield equal to 20% of their max HP. So based off his max HP. So just 
another reason to put max HP on him, really push that thing to the ceiling uh, all the way through the sky. Um, and then it lasts for 20 seconds. The more faction allies that are on the team, the more frequently it takes effect. So again, you probably wanna build at least a four person, if not a five man North Throne team, just to increase the chances of this happening. If you combine that with his own shields, he just will always have a shield up, essentially. Add in that that North Will if you need a little extra healing, or if you're like me and you just want the little extra block. I really do think Olug's Wall is best in slot. Maybe for later game content, you will need those heals, or you will need uh, the other mythic artifact that I discussed that gives 20% extra healing effect. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy that. If you like guides like this, if you want to see more guides, you can make requests in the comments or on my Discord. I've been Fastidious. Like the video if you liked it. Comment if you'd like. Share it. I'll see you in the next one. Fast Didius.